What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, I'm going to be doing something a little unorthodox. I'm going to try to teach new programmers how the stack and the heap works. And this is essentially how a compiler works. How is the compiler actually working underneath the hood of your programming language? And this is absolutely crucial. Um, to learning how to program and the crazier part is that this is going to set you apart from people who are even professional developers like there's probably professional software developers out there who have no clue how a st uh, the compiler works or how a stack in a heap works and that's scary because I am thinking you know as a professional developer all the time I'm thinking like is this, you know, where's this going? Where's this going? You know, is this on the stack? Is this on the heap? Or, you know, sometimes you run into, you run into bugs all the time that are literally compiler related and you need to know these because you will see warnings all the time. You'll see things like an object reference warning. Like that's a super um, common warning that if you don't know how uh, a value type or a reference type, type works, you will have no idea what's going on. So, I want to just kind of get this video out of the way because number one, I really like talking about compilers, as bad as that sounds. And number two, this is going to really set you apart from people and this is going to be like, this will really help your, your career. So look at it like this. If I were to come up to your desk and I would never do that, like I would never do this to somebody, but if I were to come up to your desk and I just took like a huge stack of like just all these random papers and just like threw them on top of your desk and I said, sort these pieces of paper by their size and just do it like as quickly as you can. It would be very similar to like how a computer is doing that, but it's doing it with data. Whenever you, you click this little button right here, what's going on is that when the program actually runs too, but the computer is actually, you know, storing your data based on, you know, what type of data it is and what type or, uh, you know, what type of data it is and is storing them on the stack versus the heap. And I'm going like, okay, if you are somebody who's like a professional programmer, there are, and you know, you know, you know how a compiler works too. Just remember that, you know, I'm trying to teach people how, you know, these things work in a way that's not going to confuse them. So if you see things that are, you know, there are extenuating circumstances. There are, you know, there's always like a special case for everything. Just realize that for the new people, I'm trying to, you know, keep things simple. So let's just try to keep things simple and let's not get too, you know, worked up over the details. So let's just say I got an int and we're going to call this one test value. And you could, you can, name this whatever you want to it doesn't it doesn't even really matter so we're going to say test value so an int is a very small piece of a relatively small piece of data very low level we could even go more lev low level than that we could even call this thing a byte we want to get super low level low level value <laughs> not for this is not for noobs no noobs can use this such low level programming. Fucking noobs. Okay, so then we have, we'll call it a three. So that's even, that's even more low level. That's even a smaller value. Where are values like this going to be held? So this is a bool, bool value. Where do you think value, are these going to be stored on the stack or are these going to be stored on the heap? A bool value is going to be stored on the stack. It's a very small value. It's going to go on the stack. So when you execute, when you hit this little part up here, when you hit this little green button and it compiles, it's going to go through and you can hit your debugger and you can actually watch this actually, you know, happen in real time. You go through int value and then these are going to be stored on the stack. If you hover over them, let me show you a cool little trick. So this is the actual, so whenever you hit that compile button and when the computer actually stores information, this is not being stored. This is just a representation of a value. This is a de declaration. This is a data type. This actually isn't stored in the actual computer. 
this is the value that's going to actually be stored and this is the value that's going to say hey human i don't know who you are but this is where the value is going to be stored because i don't know where exactly you know i don't know i i, I can't speak letters so in order for you to come get this data this is where you need to store it and for some reason it is let me see here yeah okay for some reason it was on hexadecimal i don't know even know why so when you hover over it what shows it gives you like, like a nice little box for your data and it gives you a four if you notice here the four is just a four and that's kind of the beauty of storing things on the stack it's just there it's like it's not going anywhere it's not you know you can literally just hover over your piece of data you could look at it and say hey buddy whoa cool you're stored on the stack because i can see you that's awesome wow then you go through here you've got your bull okay so trick question we're talking about strings a string is usually a pretty small value where is a string stored string Ooh, sweet let's see so go ahead click in this little part right here get your debugger out run it with a debugger cool let's see string value awesome wait wait a second can't actually see it let me go back here all right we'll go ahead and store it we'll write it to the console so that we have like a way that we can actually see it when we're debugging another debugging trick is if you're at the very last value like that you could just put a console write line and you can actually see like what's happening in the debugger otherwise the debugger will close out which is kind of annoying i wish it didn't do that but it also represents another important part of programming because watch after the can program actually executes that's when that value is going to be stored it doesn't like the computer has to actually look at it the computer is actually going to determine where it's going to store the value and then it's going to move on and it doesn't do those at the exact same time so i guess it's like a it's kind of like an important lesson there so let's look at this yep we have a string value and it's stored sting <laughs> i spelled that wrong but a string is actually a reference type you would not believe it but a string is actually a reference type of all things just uh, probably not the most important valuable piece of knowledge but hey it might impress somebody one day so you might as well you know learn what it is so we've talked a lot about the stack and let me pull up i've actually got a nice little hold on I've actually got a nice um, visual here. Where's the stack C sharp? Okay, so I'm going to link to this in the actual YouTube video, but look at a stack like this. A stack is kind of the way it sounds like. This is a piece of data, piece of data, goes on the stack goes like this goes like this and I'm not gonna put that on there because it's gonna fall but you can't you know you can't just access the data however you want to like you have to take it off in certain parts so if I want to take off the stack to go like that I have to go like that and I have to go like that the heap on the other hand is a different data structure a heap is almost like the drawers for your clothes or drawers for in in your house you can go in you can grab you you can literally just grab data you know wherever you want to and there's no specific way that the data actually has to go on the actual heap um just for beginner's sake a stack has very small types of data you can store ints but the heap is usually reserved for large pieces of data you're that's where you're going to put objects that's where you're going to put um bigger the the, the real reason for the heap is so that you can store large objects and you can store references to data i hope that really i hope that clicks so stack is for value types and this is very 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 important the heap is for 
reference types. It's for big objects. It's for data that you're saying like, hey, like this is not in a value type. This is not a small data type. Like I don't know, you know, I can't store this here because this is too big. So you need to put this on the heap. And what's going to happen is that I am going to put a reference to your object on the stack, or let's just say, you know, I'm putting a piece of paper on the stack and saying, I'm gonna write it down and say, hey man, uh, this is like, you can store a reference to this. Like I can't put this on the stack. You can store a reference to this and like whenever you want to go get your data, you know, you can go, go get it in the heap and you know, it's always going to be there. It'd be almost like layaway for your, it's almost gonna be like layaway for your objects or it's gonna be layaway for your data. Say, hey, like uh, I'm just gonna put this here and when you know, the company comes to get, you know, whatever, you know, when the company comes to get it and throw it away or whatever they're going to do with it, it's going to be right here and you can, you know, go get it whenever you want to. And that's going to be a reference type. So let's go ahead. And this is going to be very important to your career, not even joking. So <clears throat> let's go ahead in here and we're going to actually create our very first class, AKA reference type, AKA object that we're going to store on the heap so let's go ahead name it you can name it whatever you want to it really doesn't even matter stack heap example and we're going to change this to public because that's bothering me and i don't know why they call it internal anymore and let's just create our own let me see here let me just <clears throat> going to create just a nice little method if this is your first course what's public public means your uh whatever can be used in anywhere in your program just like look at it like that if it's confusing you the int right here is what is going to be returned and in this case we're just going to take something we're going to add five we're just going to call this a val int result and if this is confusing you, you know, just kind of you know, just take it in. A lot of programming is just going to be confusing anyway. So just kind of stick with it. I know it kind of sucks, but we're, we'll get through this together. Return result. Okay. And here we go. Literally just going to take in a value, going to take their, going to store a result. The result we are going to add to it and then we're going to return the result so why did i go through all the trouble of making this thing when i could literally just make this program in here it's really because i want to demonstrate what a heap is and how the heap actually works and all, like i said all of these values are going to be stored on the stack so we can leave this here and this is going to be, pay attention to this because this is going to be really important. Okay, so what we could, if we're going to access this, this thing doesn't even actually exist. Like if we were to run this program here, let me show you. So even though we have went in here and created this program, this doesn't actually even exist and we can't even use it. And that's what classes kind of are. They're little like factory, they're almost like little factories of data. There, there is like something called a factory in programming and it doesn't have anything to do with that, but they're almost like little uh, type set or like little tools for creating data. So if you need like some kind of data, you just say, hey, put this data here, create this data, put this data here, boom. It's not like a value type or it's like you just create, or it's just there. Like a class, an object reference, like you actually have to actually create it. So let's go ahead and here, we are going to create this object. Okay, stack heap example. And we're just going to name it. Think of this almost as like a variable. It's not, don't get uh, freaked out by it. And then right here, so we have this. What you wanna do, <clears throat> you see this red squiggly line? Hit control, hit dot. And it's going to go ahead and it's a quick little hack so that you can quickly bring it in. So I'm going to bring this up here because it's bothering me. What's going on here? Like, why do we have like this weird language and why do we have th like, 
why do, why can't we just make everything a variable like what's the deal because like i said you need these big objects because you need ways to track data in complex ways and that's kind of like i said that's what the heap is for so let's go ahead let's run it through it we'll just skip through these variables for now because we don't even really need to so when the computer gets to here what's going to happen is it's going to create this object it's going to assign it this value and this is the type this is like what it has to be like this is the label on it this is like your way of labeling this data and saying hey like there's nothing else that can go in here and this is the type of data and if another piece of data goes in here that's not what this is that's not what this class is throw an error because it's not supposed to be there and that's generally the gist of it there's more to it than that but let's not you know get too carried away here so this is what actually creates the object and what creates the reference like i said it's going to store it on the stack and it's going to give it a frame or it's going to give it a way to actually you know keep track of the data but the computer is going to say hey this is like a big object so we need to put this on the heap and then i am going to put a label on it so that you can go get it when you want to and that's what this is like I said, in theory, you could probably put like the actual address and the address is going to be some kind of like crazy hexadecimal value, but computers are good at thinking in hexadecimal values, but humans need words. And in order for you to be able to go get that, you know, piece of data that you want, you don't want to be putting in hexadecimal values. You want to be looking at nice words like stack heap. See what I'm saying? So that's exactly what's actually executing. So another really cool thing that I'm, i hopefully will blow your mind is that whenever you see dots you see did you just catch that whenever you see dots that's going to access that's going that's the computer's way of saying hey go in here and get my method go get the thing that i just created and do the calculation and i'll show you <clears throat> go in here add five we need you to add some kind of low level value. I don't know why it's, it's saying that. So we're just gonna go ahead, we're gonna add three and we're gonna watch what happens when this part actually executes. So look at it like this. I'm gonna step you through it logically. It's gonna go through, it's gonna assign all these values. We don't even need to worry about that. It's going to create our object. It's gonna say, hey, go uh, put, this on, put this on the heap. This doesn't need to be on the stack because this this is like an actual object. This is complex and this doesn't need to be on the heap because this could turn into a big object later. This could, you know, we don't want this on the stack. Then it's going to go to our object. It's going to step inside of it or it's gonna go inside of it. We're going to go, it's gonna pass in our value, go down here. It's gonna assign a value type. This thing's going on the stack. Remember, this is going on the stack. The stack, it's going to reference this value. It's going to add our value to it. And then it's going to return it. The actual method is going to be placed on the call stack. So look down here and notice two very important things. So our add, our add five uh, was actually placed on the call stack. The call stack is actually used too as a way to keep track of the actual execution and what's actually executing in your program. So the it's gone on the call stack. It's not gone on the it's the heap is specifically reserved for objects, although there are some extenuating circumstances. It's going to go back, it's going to return it, and then it's going to pop it off the stack and give it a value. That's probably very confusing. <laughs> okay. That's a, that's a good place to start. I hope that I drove it, really drove it home. If there's anything uh, that was maybe confusing to you that you would like explained a little bit more or maybe in a little bit in more in depth, or if maybe there was just something that wasn't clicking, I'd love to, you know, type down in the comments like what you want to be explained and I'll do, be more than happy to. But I hope that at least got you in the door. Like the the video wasn't the whole you know the whole gambit, and it wasn't a, like a whole college course on how actually compiler works. But I hope that just got you in the door and maybe clarified things a little bit. So you know you're building a really strong foundation for your career. You're not just 
inputting, you know, or you're not just doing for loops that insult you all day. You're actually learning like in depth, like how these things are actually working. And I hope that kind of like got you. That was like, just like a nice little like introduction to stacks and heaps so that, you know, this will really set the foundation for your career and really get you going and, you know, really help you down the line. But that's going to be my video for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Uh, leave it, leave a comment down below. Tell me one, tell me one way that I can make this video better because I really want to make these videos good. Hope that you guys enjoyed it. And as always, thank you for watching.